time now for a review of what's making headlines in today's newspaper. So let's bring a rise analyst, Constant Ikoku. Good morning, Adesua. Good morning, Constance. Lovely to see you this morning. Lovely to see you. And to Charles and Yolanda. Uh, this one, Yolanda. Okay, you got the... <laughs> What's That's happening? The... Is that burgundy? What color oh, is that? Wow. Yeah, you know what? It's a secret memo. We're speaking a secret <laughs> language. Okay. okay. Uh, That's the question I asked them. That Was this planned? So why am I looking different? Charles <laughs> didn't get the memo this morning. Exactly. Charles and I will retaliate next week. Absolutely. Sure. Watch. <laughs> okay, to look at the papers with us this morning we have Eniola Akinko too. He is the chief international correspondent of the Africa Report. He didn't get the memo as well. Welcome Eniola. <laughs> Good morning okay. everyone. Hello and welcome to the program. We'll begin with this day newspaper. Mm -hmm. Tinubu to Macron we are repositioning Nigeria's economy for more impactful FDIs. President Bola Tinubu is on a state visit to France. He's seeking cooperation and investment in areas of education, food, energy, solid minerals, and other things. He spoke of a friendly investment climate in Nigeria and asked investors to take advantage of it. Nigeria is open for business with a vibrant youth population, he explained. I mean, the president apparently has a good relationship with French President Emmanuel Macron. They've known each other even before he came into office. But let's, you know, use this opportunity or it presents us an opportunity to look at African presidents in general visiting, you know, Western countries, uh, literally begging for investments into the continent. They always seem helpless in some of these cases. And you're like, what are your thoughts on this? Oh, well, first of all, let me say I really like the bromance between the two men. I like the camaraderie and everything. I, I watched... I followed it very, very closely yesterday because our headquarters is in Paris, so we had to sit down, monitor all through yesterday. And I mean, I was really impressed. Um, I mean, the, France is very, very purposeful when it comes to Nigeria. You see, they have a, a France-Nigeria Business Council, and everyone who, is, who matters in Nigeria is in that council. You have Adenuga there, you have Dangote, you have Bois, you have Elumelu, you have... So many of them, I mean, you don't really have this sort of arrangement with other countries. And of course, you have to understand the context of this particular meeting. Um, Niger, um, Burkina Faso, Mali, and all the other countries that have pulled out of ECOWAS, you know, and have sent out you know, French interests from their countries. You see that um, Nigeria is trying to step in and now take up that role. I think, I hope this works to our advantage. There was an OPED, Jointly authored by Tinubu and Macron yesterday, you know, where they said, look, this relationship is based on mutual respect. And I hope it's not just rhetoric. I hope that's how it ends up being. And I think Nigeria can take advantage of this. Yeah, right. Um, and you're like, it's interesting that you mentioned the relationship between uh, France and Francophone African countries while they are pushing to exit from uh, those long term, you know, so called colonial pacts. It seems that Nigeria is going the other way, although it's it's different contest and it's different historical, um, uh, it's different histories between us and France. But at the same time, when you look at African countries or any country that has developed, they have to be in a position to take control and manage the type of development that they want to see in their country, Charles. Well, um, note that France has actually lost a lot of influence among its former colonies in West Africa. You know, so, so many of these countries have been taken over by military junta's, and they've actually removed themselves from the economic uh, community of West African states. So France actually has that responsibility of gaining some economic leverage in the West African region. And towards that end, it has become absolutely necessary to woo Nigeria as the next uh, beautiful bride and you know like uh, Eniola said the bromance between uh, President Tinubu and President Macron will definitely facilitate that relationship and you know we will be hoping that it will be mutually beneficial to both nations because you know in the past it's been known that the former colonial masters were getting the lion's share of everything but it's a very different foundation to build upon now because France was never colonized, Nigeria was never colonized by France. 
Nigeria was never right. France's colony. And so we are starting on a different footing altogether, hoping that this time around, the distribution of benefits will be a lot more equitable. Also, it's key to mention that France still has substantial influence in Francophone African countries. Okay. Let's look at Vanguard newspaper. Tax reform bills offer 55% to states in new sharing formula. The value-added tax, VAT, distributed to states and federal government will now be 55% for states and 10% for the federal government if this bill is passed. There will be zero VAT on exports and essential commodities, while income tax will be reduced from 30 to 25%. I mean, essentially, this set of four tax bills uh, has sweeping changes in it. Now it has passed a second reading in the Senate in spite of opposition. The good thing is that the bills have been referred to the Committee on Finance, which will now organize a public hearing. So the information is all out now. Any group that has reservations about these tax bills needs to go to that hearing in order that their voices are not silenced, Aniola. Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> this particular uh, tax reform is the fulcrum of uh, President Tinubu's um, economic policy. You can see that, I think, if you look at his, um, the MTEF, the Medium Term Expenditure Framework, this bill, this tax reform is one of the, you know, the things that underpin a lot of the assumptions in that bill, and it needs to really scale through. I, I just hope that both sides can reach a compromise because uh, you know it won't be good to throw away the bill in its entirety. You know it's going to be good to throw away the baby with the bathwater. But of course, you understand too that President Tinubu wants to win re-election in 2027, most likely, and he's going to need the North. So I think th at some point there's going to be some compromise. I think uh, things are taking shape. Um, it was um, well, what was it, 60 percent derivation before? I'm not, I don't really understand this headline. Is it now saying that it's 55% derivation now? Is that what it's now saying? If that is the case, that means that there's some progress being made. But I think, you know, they're still going to demand for more concessions. I mean, that's what politics is all about, compromise, give and take. So I think at the end of the day, all sides will, you know, be able to reach a compromise. Vanguard newspaper, but their judge tackles on Nanoga for insulting Obasanjo. Recall that former President Olusegun Obasanjo criticized President Bola Tinubu's government during a lecture at Yale in the United States. In response, presidential spokesman Bayon Nanuga said Obasanjo is not an ideal leader and accused him of overseeing what he described as fraudulent elections during his time in office, among other things. Now, PDP chieftain uh, Chief Wadeja says insulting an elder in Yoruba culture is forbidden and that Onanaga will face the consequences. <laughs> this one, let me bring you in here. First of all, let me quote Bode George. He said, and I quote, an old man who could be by Onanaga's father said something and you took him on by blasting him right, left, and center. How do you think, see things playing out at this one? Well, I would say, first of all, you know, the presidency is a team of spokespersons or spokesmen. Sometimes it's hard to decipher their roles at this current juncture. Have taken to engaging in political discourse and mudslinging and using sometimes the presidency to handle sometimes their personal handles. And I think it's unbecoming, actually, of the type of communication that we expect from the presidents of Nigeria or the people who represent him to the public. Now, on what um, Chief Bode George said, Chief Bode George himself has said harsh things <laughs> about some elders also in the past. So honestly, hearing it from him, I'm slightly surprised. <laughs> you know, he's had a, his own unkind words to say. Maybe he believes that uh, Bayo Onanuga is too small to, to, to say the things that he said. But, you know, ultimately, <laughs> you have to always talk about the distractions, sometimes right. the distractions from the issues. Are the issues that uh, President Baba Asandra brought up, um, are they relevant? He's talking mm. about the fact that our, our GDP is lower now than it was under the PDP government. Now, that is just an objective fact. So if the, you know, the presidency's uh, surrogate, so of Bayonanuga wants to criticize uh, the substance of what uh, former President Obasanjo said, then that would be fine. Mm -hmm. But at the, t at the end of the day, you know, call it mud slinging or, 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 or insults to, a former, to an elder statesman, I think it's unbecoming. Right. I mean, I, you know, when you talked about um, what Bayon Ananaga said, I think the difference is that people expect that at a certain level 
of communication and decorum from someone that is a presidential advisor. Mm -hmm. You know, but Chief Bode Judge is, is doesn't work for government or any other person, but those that work for the government, you know, that there's, there's a level of um, decorum that is expected of them. I think that's the difference. Let's look at daily trust. Inflation leaders move to resolve ACF crisis. The Arawa Consultative Forum, the umbrella body of Northern Nigeria, came under fire recently for comments made by its chairman uh, that the North is best served by Northerners. The backlash was so strong that uh, Maman Osuma and the chairman was suspended by the group. The twist here, though, is that several groups have declared their support for Maman for insinuating that the North will not support a candidate, will, well, will support a candidate in 2027 against President Bola Tinubu. Now the region is rallying around to resolve a seeming disagreement within its foes. Some actually think that the Suman's uh, news or statement rather resonates strongly with them. Anyola, um, what do you think about this situation playing out? Uh, it's just um, usual politics of disagreement and all that. Ahead of 2027, um, uh, there's a lot of division in that in the ACF. Most times, when it comes to um, who they're going to support in the election, I think the last election was it a tickle or at some point they then said they were not going to pick anybody. So this is this is not a uh, new. We look at even other social cultural groups. Afeni Ferritu now has uh, two factions, two chairmen. In their nineties, you know, you have the fashion rati <laughs> group, you have um um pa, um Adibanjo. So these things are not new at all. All these divisions you see in these social cultural groups. It's just a reflection of politics. Yeah, and, and then Charles, when you look at the North in general, the cohesion it used to have is is no longer there. So it might be difficult to, you know, strike one particular political direction and ask everybody to follow. So I think that's part of the things they are struggling with right now. You see, the problem with the North is its ethnic diversity, the multiplicity of ethnicities in the North. And, you know, ethnic politics, let's face it, is always a major issue. Then the North is divided between the North Central and the Core North. These two divides are always almost always at uh, each other's throats and most of the time they don't even agree as to which uh, political party or which candidate to um, support during general elections so there's always uh, that divide there both ethnic and uh, regional and sub-regional things are like that well um, the suspension of uh, Maman Mike Osman the chairman of uh, the ACF would definitely be seen in a political light, I mean, based on the comments uh, that he made. So right. some other groups within the ACF have actually come out to say, no, we actually support what he said because, yes, the North's interests are best served by the North. But be that as it may, ACF hardly ever speaks with one voice. Okay, The Guardian. Shan Migration FG tells a fresh foreign trained medical doctors. The coordinating minister of health and social welfare, Professor Ali Pate, has pleaded to newly inducted foreign trained medical and dental graduates to remain home and contribute to the health sector. He told the doctors that the government is working diligently to improve conditions for health workers. I mean, as much as this appeal is necessary, um, inability to adequately address working conditions may not hurt the mass exodus of nurses, doctors, and the like at this one. Do you think so? I completely agree. You know, it's, it's honestly like a, a, a boy promising to marry you and just saying, just wait, I'll come and visit <laughs> you one day. You know, just wait for me, I'm coming. It's, it honestly, it, it's, not, it's, it's not a... It does not inspire confidence. And I would, I would like to say that, you know, our minister, Ali Pate, is trying very hard and putting a lot of work in. But at the end of the day, the problems that our doctors or our healthcare professionals are facing have a lot to do with things that are w not within his control. You know, we have our doctors being, being uh, kidnapped. 
you know, and, and taking it to bandit holding uh, areas to go and treat bandits. We also have foreign exchange um, pressures. We have the fact that they're not being well paid. We have the fact that our insurance system, you know, is not robust. And then they have opportunities in New Zealand, in Australia, in England, and in Canada. And they are also having to think about how to provide for their families and how to grow as individuals. So while I do understand the appeal, it, enough is not being done. Yeah. And, it, and it's also very frightening because now mm. you can go to healthcare centers that are shutting down or have one, only one professional or one specialist or none at all. And so it doesn't bode well for the country's future, but it's definitely a crisis that needs to be dealt with, but not just by our Minister of Health, okay. Ali Pate, but our Minister of Finance as well and Coordinating Economy, let's uh, Mr. Look at, let's look at some figures. Between 2020 and 2023, the World Bank uh, uh, indicated that over 900,000 Nigerians uh, migrated abroad to Canada, US, UK, and Europe. And Europe, that's staggering. A lot going on. Uh, let's also quickly look at New Telegraph. Um, here in New Telegraph, uh, tax reform bills, invitation of experts by NAS in order. Minimum wage, 70,000 may not buy tissue paper in next five years, according to the NLC. Also, CDS were deepening civil military relations to uh, enhance national security. Alleged abuse of office, as uh, CBN governor aide testifies in court, details $400,000 transaction we also have daily independent uh, tax reform bills proposed new sharing formula seat 55 percent to states fg to begin collection of 300 dollar helicopter landing fee soon political action must go beyond protest says obasanjo and we are urging closer to stability in food security says tinubu and then we also have Daily Sun, Nigerians blow 68 billion naira on UK visa in one year. Rejection soar, says report. And then let's go to the international headlines. Um, Daily graphic, Bawumia Mahama signed Peace Pact. 11 other candidates also concur. There's also a quote here, your uh, vote is your power. If you don't use it, Others will use it against you. This quote is from Nelson Mandela. I mean, uh, Yolanda, this quote is apt. The vote you have is your ticket to instituting change and whatever you wish to see for your country. But at the same time, it depends on if the vote actually counts because sometimes if the elections are fraudulent, then your vote doesn't even count. Indeed, your vote is your power, but just as you've said, if there's any rigging in place, then who knows, <laughs> what does it count for? But we've been talking about this for a few days, and I think so far we've had a pretty positive outlook and hoping that, you know, there's going to be some positive changes that are going to come with this election. And that's all that we've been speaking about, and I'm hoping that the negative side of it doesn't leak in. But then again, this is African politics, so who knows what the future has to all right, Citizen Newspaper, no black on black violence, says EFF. Despite what Mpofu claims, there's no rivalry with uh, Zuma's MKK. The Economic and Financial, no, sorry, the Economic and Freedom Fighters, EFF, has denied creating a fatal ground for political rivalry, which could result in violence between pro black political parties. This comes after Dalim Pofu says, uh, you know, the um, tensions between the EFF and the MK party uh, is, is uh, out of control. And he also referred to black on black violence in the late 80s. Yolanda, again, what we know is that there's tension between the MK and the EFF following the fact that a lot of top leaders of EFF, you know, left the party to join the MK. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the political landscape in South Africa is changing. They would have to find a way to coexist as, as parties in the interest of the people. Absolutely. The political landscape is volatile, to say the least. But I think at this point, promoting unity and addressing systematic causes of violence is what is important. And encouraging more education in you know, understanding the different cultures that you abide with in that country. Yeah. All right, so let's look at metro.co.uk. Master Chef TV Greg accused mm. over sick sex jokes. The BBC presenter Greg Wallace is facing claims of inappropriate sexualized behavior 
um, during filming by 20 women. One witness claims the TV celebrity 60 walked into the room naked, apart from a sock over his penis, then did a dance. <laughs> Niola, yesterday, you know, there was a lot, you know, talk about this. First it was Dodi al -Fayed, now he's a BBC presenter. It speaks to a proper or appropriate behavior in the workplace. Um, well, his team, they, I mean, they issued a statement, I think his legal representative issued a statement yesterday, uh, saying that it's not a case of sexual harassment, at, you know, probably it's just indecency, and um, I haven't, <laughs> it's quite funny to me, but I, it's, uh, I mean, there's no place for indecency in the workplace. So uh, I hope he learns his lesson. He's been running that program for what, like 19 years now, and um, of course it might just be the end of it all if, uh, if, um, uh, I mean, if things don't work out for him, let me put it that way. Uh, but, but let me just digress, and I, I, this is not about, I'm not putting what about is him and all that here, but you see that the world, there seems to be some sort of change now about, um, uh, about decency and, and what is right and what is wrong, especially when you look at people like Donald Trump, who, despite all that he did, look at where he has gotten to, he's gotten back into the White House. And now you have this sort of behavior you know, being um, tolerated. Now, you have people who say, oh, there's no problem with indecency, there's no problem with all that. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a change in world. Uh, let's see, uh, Financial Times, talk to Trump and by American uh, Lagarde Council's European leaders. In an interview with the Financial Times, European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde advised that rather than retaliating to President Trump's new tariffs, Europeans could sit down with him to negotiate, they can also offer to buy certain things from the U.S. and signal that they are ready to work together. I mean, this seems like a sensible approach rather than an outright trade war, uh, Charles, in 30 seconds. Well, the rhetoric by Trump has been militant. I mean, he is going to impose tariffs and the others too have been responding, but in a rather muted fashion. So, well, we are just uh, keeping our fingers crossed because at this moment it's just all talk. So let's see how that will be backed up by action. For now, we cannot speculate anything so far. Let Trump uh, take over power first and then we'll see how it unfolds. Yeah, it's going to be uh, maybe a roller coaster, but we'll <laughs> see. I'm afraid that's all we have for the paper review this morning. Oh, thank you. That's all we have for you today on Daybreak. I am Adesua Kiwa Osage. I'm Charles Eruka. It's goodbye from me. And I'm Yolanda Robert. Please do keep it here on Arise News. The Morning Show is next.